This is the ultimate guide to get you started with Procreate. If you have just downloaded the app, I can imagine that you want to get started right away. So in this video, I will guide you through the basics without too much chit chat, straight to the point. So you will be drawing and painting in Procreate in no time. The app Procreate is for iPads. So that's the first step, I guess. If you want to get Procreate, you'll need to go to the app store, download it. It costs about $10, I think. Totally worth it. And then once you have downloaded the app and you open it, you will see the gallery. And it'll look different than this. It'll have some standard, super awesome artworks in there. They are there to impress you, show you what Procreate can do and to scare you, I think. But don't be scared. You can create artworks in Procreate too. If you don't believe me, then just go and follow one of my You Can Draw This video tutorials in which I guide you through every single step and you don't need any experience with Procreate at all. Or you can just keep watching this video and I will just guide you through all the basic steps to get you started. So we have the gallery where you'll see all of your works that you have created. And to get started with drawing or painting, you'll need a canvas, of course. And to create a canvas, you can go to the plus here in the upper right corner. And you'll see some standard sizes that Procreate has already put in there. But you can also create your own unique custom canvas by tapping the plus over here. You can set the width and the height, for instance, 3000 by 2000. That's a decent size. You can name the canvas. Like painting is fun. You can also change the color profile, which I always set to sRGB. You can change the time-lapse settings. Procreate makes a time-lapse video for you automatically when you paint. And here you can set the quality. If you don't have a lot of space on your iPad, then I would suggest using a lower quality. And you can change the canvas properties. You can set a background color. I always have it set to white as a start, but you, well, if you prefer black or red or blue or whatever color, you can change that here. And then when you tap create, you will have a new canvas. You don't have to do this every time because if you go back to the gallery and tap the plus, you will see your painting is fun. Canvas size, you'll see it there and you can always use it to create a new canvas. So let's go through the features, the basic features that you'll need to get started with drawing and painting. I won't go through all of the features in Procreate, just the ones that you really need and that you'll want to know as a beginner. But in the description, I'll also leave some links to other videos, other short explanation videos to help you get on your way as well. So first things first, you can use your pen. If you have a pen and your fingers in the app, you can use your fingers to zoom out and zoom in on your canvas, very handy. And of course you will want to use a brush. And Procreate has a very recognizable icon, so you'll immediately know where the brush is. Here you'll see the brush library and it'll contain lots of basic brushes, standard brushes that Procreate has already put in there. And these standard brushes, they are great. So they are great to get started with. But if you want more brushes, then there are loads of free brushes out there. For instance, I have a big pack that you can get through freefromflow.com, which is totally free and which you can use to have a lot of fun during my tutorials. But for now, let's just check these, these standard brushes that are already in Procreate. You have sketching brushes, inking brushes, drawing, calligraphy, lots of stuff which you can use to experiment. Let's just grab a brush and you can use your pen to make strokes on your canvas. Simple as that. Here on the left side, you'll see a slider or actually two sliders. With the top slider, you can decide the size of your brush. So you can make it smaller or bigger. And the lower slider will decide the opacity of your brush. If you set it to a low percentage, your brush will be more transparent. Some brushes also use the pressure you use on your pen to decide either the size of your brush or the opacity. It depends on a brush that you're using. So when you're using Procreate, I really recommend using a pencil because you can simulate that, that pressure sensitivity with your finger. Don't go pressing really hard with your finger on the screen because that, that won't work. In this little bar on the left, you'll also see this little arrow in case you want to undo your stroke but you can also use a two finger tap on the screen to undo your stroke or whatever you have done on your canvas. And if you want to go back, you can either use this little arrow or use 
three fingers. And in case you want to erase everything, you can use your three fingers and swipe on your screen. Now you will find these same brushes as you're seeing in the brush library. You'll also see those under this little icon. That's the smudge tool. And the smudge tool, it does what it says. It smudges paint on your canvas. Let's grab two colors that are relatively close together, red and orange. And then you can go to the smudge tool, that little finger, and let's just grab a brush that is standard in Procreate. You can grab anything like the wet acrylic and you can use it to smudge the paint. And you can use it to blend colors, for instance, soften areas. And you can use any type of brush as a smudge tool. Same goes for the eraser. This is the little eraser icon. It can be used with every single brush. Doesn't matter which one you use, any brush can be an eraser. And you can also change the size, of course, and the opacity. And then you can just erase whatever you have made. So now you already know how to use a brush to paint to smudge and to erase anything in Procreate. But now you probably also wonder about layers. That's the next icon here in the menu, these two little squares, it'll show your layer menu. Now working with layers, that's the thing that's, that's pretty different from drawing in real life on paper. You can see layers in digital art programs as transparent sheets of paper. So right now we have our background color, which is totally opaque, it's white, but we can actually also turn it off by using this little check mark. And we have layer one, which has nothing on it yet. So it's a transparent sheet of paper. And then you can use the brush and let's set it to black again. We can paint something on it. And now we have this black mark that is on the transparent sheet of paper, but everything else is transparent. And now we can make a new layer on top by using that plus and now let's grab another color. And now we have a new transparent sheet of paper and we can paint on that. And we are covering the other sheet of paper, but they are separate. And so you can move these around. You can move layers by tapping and holding it and then dragging it underneath. Now you can see that this sheet of transparent paper is on top of the orange red one. You can also play around with the opacity of the layer, making it more transparent. Let's do that for this layer one. You can tap that N and here you have a slider, which you can use to make the layer more transparent. So you can see that using layers give you endless possibilities. You can drag to the left on your layer to either lock, duplicate or delete the layer. Locking it means you won't be able to paint on it, which can be handy if you have created something and you don't want to accidentally mess it up, then you'll want lock, duplicate. Well, that kind of makes sense. You'll duplicate the layer and deleting it is when you're not happy with your layer, you can just delete it. Now you can also select layers. Now we have layer one selected, but you can select multiple layers by dragging to the right. Then you can delete multiple layers or you can group them. And grouping is handy if you want to keep things organized. Perhaps you have an artwork with a lot of elements and you want to group them in like foreground, background, middle ground, or a vase and flowers. I don't know. The possibilities are just endless. And with a group, you can do the same thing as with a layer. We can delete it all at once. Now let's make another shape, make this circle on layer one. And when you tap a layer, you'll see multiple options. You see rename, which makes sense. You can give it another name. You have select. If you tap that, it'll select everything that's on the layer. So in this case, that's a circle. Now let's turn off the selection. Then you have copy which also makes sense. It'll copy whatever is on this layer and on another layer, you can paste it. So let's say we use copy, we make a new layer. Now, if you want to paste it, you can use a three finger swipe down and you can use paste. And now we have another circle, but we don't want that right now. So let's just 
undo. Then the next option is fill layer. It'll fill the layer. You can fill it entirely with a color and clearing it means clearing it. It'll just erase everything on the layer, just like with the three finger swipe. Then we have alpha lock. That's an interesting one. Once you have clicked it, you will see this checkerboard pattern around the circle. And that means that you can only paint on the shape that is already on the layer. So now we won't be able to paint on that area that has a checkerboard pattern. We can paint here, but we can paint on the circle. And this is a very powerful option. You just tap the layer again, turn it off. Then you'll see the option mask. If you tap that, you will get a layer mask attached to your circle here, to your layer. And that layer mask is a bit like another transparent sheet of paper. If it's white, it's totally transparent. But once you start painting on it with black, you will start blocking things. It won't be transparent anymore, but it'll be blocked. This is handy if you want to remove parts of a layer without it being destructive. So you could use the eraser, but if you use the mask, you can just switch back to white and make parts of that layer mask transparent again. So it's like non-destructive erasing. Then we have the next option that's invert. It'll invert anything on the layer. So what's black now will become white. And we can't see it anymore, but you'll see over here that the layer has become white. Then finally, we have reference. This is handy if you have created a line artwork on a certain layer. If you turn on reference, you can make layers underneath that reference layer and fill different areas of your line work with paint, with color. Now, if you make a new layer on top, you will get another option if you tap the layer. You will get clipping mask. If you tap that, this layer will get clipped to that little circle over here. And it kind of does the same thing as alpha lock, but then on a separate layer. So just like with alpha lock, we will only be able to paint or the paint will actually only show up on the circle. So if we do that, here you can see that it, it'll only show up on the circle. But if you look at the layer, the paint is all over. This is handy if you want more freedom than with alpha lock. You will be able to move this layer around. You can erase parts, but it does take up more layer space than using alpha lock. Now the next icon in the menu is the colored circle. If you tap it, you will see the colors menu and you can see these options here at the bottom disc, which gives you a disc where you can choose all the colors. You have classic, which it has the same colors, but it's just a different way of picking them. You have harmony where you can use this nice circle to find colors that are in harmony. You can tap analogous here and you can see these different options. Complementary, split complementary, analogous, triadic and tetradic. For instance, if you use complementary, you will see that you'll get the complementary color of the one that you are choosing over here. And this is great to get like really powerful color combinations. It's like these colors are giving each other compliments. If you have like a lot of red in your painting and you add a little bit of this blue, this red is giving compliments to the blue and empowering it. That's just a simple way of explaining it. Then we have value, which has these complicated sliders. You don't really need to look at it, but perhaps you found some hexadecimal codes somewhere and you want to enter them in this menu, then you can do that over here. You can just type in the code, use done, and you will find your color, the color that you want. And finally, you will find palettes, which you can either look at in a compact way, or you can turn it into cards, which will show you these very big color palettes. And of course, you can also make your own color palette by tapping the plus and creating a new color palette. If you do that, you can just go to disc, for instance, grab some colors and place them in your color palette. Now, in case you have a nice color in your painting and you want to use that color again, but it's not in your color palette, then you can either use this little rounded square over here 
and that'll give you this well this circle this magical circle which you can use to pick colors or you can tap and hold your finger on the screen to grab whatever color you want another option that you will probably want to use is the paint bucket tool or it doesn't really look like a paint bucket tool in procreate but the option to fill an entire shape with color all at once let me demonstrate let's delete these layers and clear this one now what you need to be able to fill a shape is you'll need a closed shape you don't want any gaps because then the paint would spill out it's filling all over and if it finds a little gap it'll it'll pass through and spill all over your canvas you'll also want to be on the same layer as the line art is or you'll want to have a layer that is used as a reference and then you want to fill the color on a separate layer but now we are going to do this on this layer we are sure that our shape is closed then we can grab a color and then to drag in the color to fill the shape you need to tap and hold the color here drag it onto the shape and then it fills if you hold it you can also adjust the color drop threshold which can sometimes be useful if either the paint is spilling out even though your shape is closed or if you get a little white edge around your shape so now you know how to use the brush the smudge tool the eraser how layers basically work and how you can pick colors but there's more to procreate we'll move on to the left side of the menu we'll start with the move tool or move and transform tool that's the little arrow here if you tap it you will see this little menu popping up at the bottom and with the move and transform tool it, it makes sense you can move and transform things and you can move or transform whatever is on the layer that you have selected when tapping that move tool so now on this layer we have this this black circle filled with orange and we can move it around and you can use the handles to make it smaller or bigger or rotate it now just make sure that you set it to uniform if you don't want to stretch your your thing your artwork if you set it to free form you can form it in any way you like if you set it to distort you can even distort it and with warp you can make crazy things happen which can be useful and at the bottom you will find different options like rotating your shape flipping it you also see the snapping options with magnetics and snapping this is handy if you want to align objects center objects for instance if you have two objects and you want them to align on your canvas or if you have an object that you want to have centered in your canvas then you'll need the snapping options next to the move tool you will find the selection tool that's the little s shape ribbon over here and you use it to select things you can either automatically select everything of a certain color you can freehand select so you can make a shape like this all wiggly or you can make straight lines with the freehand selection until you close the selection you can also make rectangular selections and ellipse selections you can add stuff to your selection or you can remove parts of your selection you can also flip your selection inverting it you can copy and paste something that you have selected feather means that you soften the edges of your selection making that a bit blurry and you can save selections using color fill will fill the entire selection if you do that you can see that everything is becoming orange and if you clear your selection well it'll just clear and your selection is gone now you'll want to use the selection tool for instance if you have a lot of elements on your layer and there's just a certain element that you want to select you might want to transform it or you might want to duplicate it then you'll want to use the selection tool to do that for instance we could select the top part of this of this element that we have on this layer and then you could use the move tool to move that part around or we could also actually erase that part by swiping with three fingers but we could also make adjustments 
on that part on that selection and that's the part of the menu that we'll go to right now you can find adjustments right over here that's a little magic wand and it's telling you it's it's adjustments the top four over here can be used to make slight adjustments to color and contrast in your painting and they will work on either the layer that you're working on or on the selection that you have same goes for the other adjustments and for a lot of these adjustments you will need to use a slider so you'll need to use those for gaussian blur all the way up to chromatic aberration for instance if you use gaussian blur you'll need to slide from left to right with either your pen or your pencil to increase or decrease the blur. And you can also switch, if you go to this little arrow, between layer and pencil. If it is set to layer, if you slide to the right, your entire layer will blur. But if you use pencil, you can go to this little magical brush, grab any brush that you like, and then you can, well, this is a little small. You can use that brush to apply the blur. So right now it's very blurred, this area, but again, it's, it's at 60% right now. So you can use the slider with your finger to slide from left to right to increase or decrease the blur. And it works the same way with the other adjustments like sharpen or glitch or whatever. Then we have the liquify tool, which is a lot of fun. It has a whole bunch of options which I would definitely suggest you play around with. What I often use is the push tool with distortion and momentum turned off. And this allows you to push and pull parts of your, of your artwork, of whatever is on the layer you are on. And this is great if you want to make slight adjustments to your illustration. And then we have the clone option, which you can use to clone areas of your of your drawing. Here we have that little circle. You can decide what area you want to clone. And then you can paint over here and clone that area, which doesn't make sense with this weird orange shape that we have. But it can be useful if you want to copy some elements from a photo, for instance, or from your artwork. And then finally, we have the actions menu. That's a little wrench over here. And there you'll find different options from add all the way to help. Help is the way to go if you want to read the entire manual of Procreate. If you tap help, you can get the Procreate handbook, which is super helpful if you want to really dive into all the features that are in the app. Here under add, you can add stuff. Just this app is so logical. You can insert a file, a photo, you can take a photo. So that means that if you use take a photo, it'll automatically open your camera. You can add text and you'll also find the cut and copy and paste options here. Then you have canvas. This is to make adjustments to your entire canvas. You can crop and resize the canvas. You can flip it. You can grab a reference image by tap, by turning on reference. It'll open a little, well, a little extra window. You can either have a small version of your entire artwork open, or you can grab an image that you want to use as a reference, or you can face paint if you are in the mood. You can also turn on animation assist, page assist, or drawing guide. If you want to learn more about animation assist, I would suggest checking out one of my You Can Draw This animation tutorials in which I take you through all the steps. With page assist, you can create a PDF file and with the drawing guide, you can turn on a guide. If you go to edit drawing guide, you can make a 2D grid, isometric grid, a perspective guide. All you have to do is tap on the screen to create a perspective guide, or you can use symmetry, which is also a lot of fun because if you use symmetry, whatever you paint on the left side will also show up on the right side. You can also go to options to make it vertical, horizontal, quadrant. You can like draw in four places at the same time or radial, which is great if you want to create mandalas, for instance. Just always make sure to turn on assisted drawing if you want to make use of this. And then just tap done. I will turn it off right now. 
Then we have the share option, which you will also want to use because once you have created your first artwork, of course you want to share it with the world. For instance, if you want to share it on social media, I would suggest sharing it as a JPEG, for instance. Then we have the video options. And you can see that time-lapse recording is turned on here. And if you go to time-lapse replay, you can see, well, a weird time-lapse video of everything we have done during this video. Then we have the prefs area where you can set your preferences, like the interface, the color of the interface. You can set your uh, pressure curve. Mine looks like this. And you can connect a different type of stylus. If you don't have an Apple Pencil, you might need to use Connect Legacy Stylus. And you can change your gesture controls. So there are some standard gestures in Procreate, like the two fingers to undo, three fingers to redo. But you can change all those settings, of course, to your liking. Now, if you want to find more hidden features and shortcuts in Procreate, I would suggest watching my other video with all the hidden features that I have found in Procreate because that might save you a lot of time in the future. Now, if you just want to get started with painting and if you want to learn by doing, then go ahead and watch one of the You Can Draw This video tutorials. Pick any one that you like and I promise you I will guide you through every single step. Have fun drawing and painting in Procreate and I'm looking forward to seeing your first artworks. Be sure to check the links in the description for more helpful videos. Also, be sure to hit that thumbs up if you have enjoyed this video. And I would like to thank you for watching. I will see you next time.